Hey YouTube and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't noticed already, I am back. The exams are over. I am done waiting for my thesis to get approved and I will be Bocconi alum. I will have been, I, I'm going to graduate from Bocconi. Exams just finished right now. Today was my last exam, the 31st of May. And so that's done, exams are done. Then I have until June 16th to get my thesis approved by my thesis professor. But my thesis is like already written. So in worst case scenario, I'm gonna have to do a bunch of edits, but the thesis is written. Then in July, the thesis committee will like evaluate my thesis and give me a grade for my thesis and then an overall grade for my degree. That's how it works here. I know. Then the actual ceremony will be in September. I'm pretty much graduated because at this point I know I'm gonna graduate but the ceremony is in September because it's you know it'll I cannot believe that it has been three years and I wanted to do my last like Bocconi update because you guys know I do them every year um I did one after the first year which talked about like all the culture shock of living in Italy and also the huge um change from the American system of education to the Italian one because like we've said a million times Italian one super theoretical a lot of things done on memorization not really my style one of the reasons why I didn't want to continue studying and the American one is really you know practice based my second one was just like an update on exams and stuff and how I was doing and now this third one will give you a little summary of my third year third year I must say was a lot better I liked it a lot more because it was a lot more American styled pretty much all of my classes had assignments that contributed to my grade they had group projects that contributed to my grade and so in the end my exam grade was only like 40 or sometimes 30 percent of the class grade and so in pretty much every single one of my exams I rocked them all the lowest grade that I got this semester was uh, like a 25 but I got like 30s 29s 28s it was by far my best performance ever also since this year was you know more it was less study 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 memorize 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 it meant that I had more time to do things like I would get all of my group work and my assignments done during school hours and then after school I would um, film videos for you guys or I would go to work or I would go hang out with my boyfriend or my friends I had a lot more free time to do things that I wanted to do so you guys saw a lot more videos this year I just took off some time um, to do these exams because I really 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 wanted to do them well and so far the grades have come back and they're all amazing so I did the right thing but that was pretty much it so in terms of like difficulty and uh, I don't know exams they were a lot better third year around if you guys are in second year crying over math too I am here to I am here to tell you there's a light at the end of the tunnel and next year will be so much better and then you'll graduate so what now a lot of people ask me what are my plans to do now that I'm graduating well I plan to stay in Italy Italy is actually pretty nice to people that graduate with like degrees from Italian universities. You have two options and neither of them is a student visa, I mean a work visa. Because a work visa in Italy is super hard to get because a job is super hard to get. So it's work visas are hard. So what they do is they allow you to convert your student visa, which turns into your permesso di sorgiorno di studio, into a permesso di sorgiorno di lavoro. So you don't have to get the work visa you just convert your permesso di sordorno. I hope that makes sense. If it didn't, I'm sorry, but the Italian system is really complicated. I'm trying my best here. They let you convert it, and you can convert it one of two ways. You can convert it either because you found a job, and so you just convert it into a permesso di sordorno di lavoro subordinato, or because you work for yourself pretty much like you make a certain amount of money a year doing freelance stuff and so you can convert it to the permesso di sojourno di lavoro autonomo and that's the one i'm doing i'm already in the process in addition i forgot this is the most important one in addition you can also extend your permesso di studio one year after you graduate so like what i'm doing right now is i'm extending my permesso di sojourno for a year to search for work that's the reason why you're supposed to do it and during this time i'm going to like get my bureaucratic stuff out of the way because you have to register yourself as a business. You have to like open a partita Eva and do a lot of bureaucratic stuff first. And I don't know how long it's gonna take. So I decided get the year long extension just in the worst case scenario that this all takes a year to set up. That way next year I can just smoothly get my permesso di lavoro or convert my permesso and then I'll be good for another year. So I'm pretty much set for the next two years at least. Like I earned the threshold of money and so I can be 
self-employed here in Italy and that's pretty much my plan. I did get some job offers because a lot of people ask like what's it like about getting jobs in Italy? It's different. Um, it's harder. I'm not gonna lie and say that it's easy. It's really hard, especially if you're a foreigner. If you're a foreigner and you don't speak like perfect Italian, you might as well say ciao. Ciao on it. It's not going to uh, be so easy, but I'm more or less fluent in Italian, so I put that on my resume, obviously. And I got some like offers. The problem with the offers were either they paid way too little. I mean, they didn't pay little. They paid the average for a new graduate. But if I make more on the internet, why would I get that job, you know? So they paid less than what I'm making now, or they were in sectors that I wasn't really interested in. Like I got one that was like being like a manager of a store in retail, which wasn't really what I was looking for. So it's really, one thing that was great about Bocconi and this whole experience is that since I was always doing so many things, and since I'm graduating on time, and since I took my time to build this like little online business persona thing, I was left with a lot of options. And so now, like, I'm really happy with where I am right now. I'm really happy to work for myself. I think that if I was able to get this far on YouTube and with my like other business ventures, doing it part time, like while I was studying at Bocconi, if I'm able to do it full time and put my full effort into it, like the sky is really the limit. So for these next two years that I've like got myself able to stay here, I just want to try to really expand on this, really push this thing to the next level, see where I can go with it and um, just keep making money. I just want to keep making money. <laughs> so that's the future. Those are your options as a newly graduated person in Italy. A lot of people asked if I wanted to go back into the States and the truth is no because the big trade-off that you have to do with Italy is the wages. Like I said, the, the, it's hard to find a job here and when you do find a job here they usually don't pay really well. The average salary for someone like the, for someone of my caliber like that went to my business school is working in like a pri the private sector is like 1500 euros a month after taxes of course but it's 1500 euros a month and i don't know somebody with the same qualifications with the same degree with the same sector in america is making 100k a year so that's that's a trade-off that you have to think about but the way i see it is i can't imagine myself living anywhere other than italy honestly i love this country so much from the north to the south i love the culture i love the people i have my boyfriend here you're like i can't imagine what it would be like to go back and live in the states after this three-year amazing experience you know and so what's better make a hundred thousand a year that you can maybe save maybe not because the price of living in america the cost of living in america is really really high and be i don't know socially miserable or stay here, be socially happy, make my 15, 1500 a month, and be comfortable, because that's another thing. I'm, I'm living comfortably. It's not like I'm trying to make it from month to month. I am fine. Um, it's just that I'm not making 100k a year. These are the choices that you have to look at. For me, Italy, at least for the near future, is where I want to stay. Um, so long as I'm able to support myself, I love living here and i wouldn't have it any other way like honestly i know i complain about things sometimes because sometimes things happen but outside of the bureaucracy it's really amazing you can't uh there's no really other way to say it